Hi all, I um, haven't talked to you in a long time. I've been showing you what I eat in the past few videos, so I thought it was time for another talking video. I was just having lunch right now, and I thought, well, why not have a little chat with you now? So that's what I'm gonna do. I've been getting a lot of questions lately, and well, a lot, so it's a bit too much to answer all of them individually, so I thought I'd let you know that now. If you do send me questions individually, you might not get an individual answer and I might just answer it in an upcoming video. I hope that's all right with all of you because it's just getting, it's getting a bit crazy to answer five, six emails, um, Instagram messages, etc. every single day and it's just taking a lot of my time and preventing me from, well, answering these questions for all of you on my channel. So I thought I'd look through a few now and answer them on the spot. I'm just gonna go through the questions that I received yesterday. The first one being, hi, I was wondering if when you were weight restoring, all the weight went to your stomach first and if so, whether it redistributed. Um, I'm weight restoring and it's all just collecting in my stomach and I find it really discouraging. So I responded to that, which as I just said, I won't be doing anymore in the future. But I responded that, um, yes, this happened to me too. It, it's quite normal, it happens to everyone, even though it is very discouraging. It's just part of recovery and something to keep fighting through because this is a point that many people want to turn back. The point is to keep going and that's how you will re reach recovery. So yes, it did start out gaining mainly in my stomach. This is where the vital organs are. This is what your body does automatically. But after a little while, I think it took two months. Um, I, I don't quite remember anymore. But after this time, it started to redistribute. And what you need to do is just to trust your body to do this and to just keep going, to keep eating and not fall back into eating disordered patterns. Another question I received was whether eating sugary foods in recovery is fine and how much to eat of them in recovery. Also, how would you best divide, how would you best divide 2000 calories and how much sweets should you eat, in your opinion, in a day? So, as I've talked about before, eating sugar in recovery, or even if you're not in recovery, is perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, especially in your recovery, the energy is going to be used to help your body recover and to replenish the cells and to fix everything that has been damaged by restriction. So, whether you eat lots of sugary foods or other kinds of food, any food will nourish you. Um, it will nourish your body, your mind, and so I don't think you should restrict in any way. You should follow your cravings and even if these initially are very sugar, junk, food focused, that will change as well as long as you listen to your body. So there's no one way for all in recovery. You just need to do what you think feels right and to eat what you crave. So if you crave one sweet a day, that's fine. If you crave 10 a day, that's fine. If you barely crave any sweets, even that is okay. Although I do think it's worth incorporating them, at least initially, um, more consciously, so that you'll at least overcome certain fears that you might have at the moment. Another question that I get asked by multiple people actually is what to do when everybody in the family or in the friend group or um, whoever you hang out with is losing weight, whereas you have to gain weight and how to deal with certain comments or conversations and um, 
just the fact that everyone else is losing weight, which can be triggering. So all I can say about that is that you should ignore these comments. Um, if you find them triggering, you can actually tell your friends or your family that you find them triggering or um, yeah, just try to avoid being around these comments, being around these influences that will make your recovery so much harder. You need to realize that you have restricted for a while and that you have put your body through a lot. And as a result, you now have to gain weight. And this is not the case for these other people who have not had an eating disorder, who are healthy and have been healthy all along. So you need to look at yourself and realize what your own goals are and why you are recovering. And to focus on that because that is the most important I also get asked a lot about exercise and recovery. I have made a video specifically on that. So if you have any questions about that, then check that out. Currently, I'm not doing any kind of exercise just because I don't feel like it. And that's perfectly fine. Let's have some more food before it gets cold. Because of the exams that have passed at around Christmas time, I got a few questions on that. And people that are still stressed now, maybe more so with coursework or with deadlines. So do I have any tips on that? Um, yeah, probably the um, tip that, that you've probably heard before, but to, um, to take breaks and to allow yourself some time off and to not stress out that way. My favorite ways to take breaks are by watching movies or series, going for a walk, especially just being outside can be really, really nice. Um, I love some hot tea and maybe some nice stretches and those things really relax me and get me ready to get working again after. Um, another good one that I got uh, several days ago. Before my eating disorder, my weight was naturally on borderline of underweight I had a BMI of 17 and a half or maybe just 18. And it's horrible that I now need to get a BMI of 20 to, to be considered healthy and to be up to the standards of my therapist and my hospitalization regime. So do I have any advice? Well, the important thing here is to realize that your body might initially need a little bit more energy just to regulate itself and to make up for the damage that has been done. If your body is naturally smaller, however, it might go to BMI 20 in the recovery phase and consider this to be an overshoot and then naturally go back down. However, you don't have to restrict for that. You don't have to stress out about that. It's something that your body will do on its own. So just go along with what the professionals tell you. They obviously know what they're doing and trust the whole process. Trust your body and keep going, listen to your cravings and to your hunger cues and, well, the most important thing, do not restrict, do not listen to the voice inside your head telling you that you used to be lighter, that you're going to be lighter, that you have to be lighter than everyone else. And yeah, as you gain weight, your mentality will change and this can be what's going to lead you into recovery. So I've gotten a lot more questions, but I will answer those when I have a bit more time. I'm just gonna finish my lunch now because um, I ate before I started recording and while recording I more or less forgot, so it must be getting cold. And then I'm gonna go off to lectures because I have lectures today. My lectures aren't all on strike. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, let me know. I will answer them in a video and I hope this was useful.